Hello YouTube, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is the last video I film as Tana Mojo and probably the first video I upload as Tana Paul. Hi guys, it's Tana Paul. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. We're actually in a giant rush right now. It is like 8.30 in the morning and by 9.30 I need to be leaving to the jet to go to Vegas to get married. I'm technically just getting ready for like the jet and like Jake's intro to his vlog and like my vlog and like photos that we're gonna take which is absolutely fucking ridiculous Unfortunately, Jake lives in a world with uh, 40,000 photographers that don't give a fuck about my need to facetune So I really have been going out of my way to look extra facetuned in real life me having a lip injection bruise on my wedding day. <laughs> I was sitting here getting ready right now, and I, I am getting ready for my wedding day, theoretically. Don't get me wrong, I'm getting my makeup done. Shout out Makes Cahill. I wish I could do my own makeup on my wedding day and be a humble ass bitch, but in reality, my mediocre beat absolutely does not cut it, and Makes Cahill is a face tune in real life. So, um, and I wouldn't want to get married in a non Makes Cahill beat, okay? But I was sitting here getting ready right now, you know drawing on my eyebrows i'll paint the picture for you you guys can come you know join me in that scene with every stroke of the brush i was in my own head like you are missing out on so many views that you could so easily get if you just film this get ready with me because you're already getting ready how to kick your face like a ho no more <laughs> wedding day edition but really i haven't done a how to kick your face like a pro in so fucking long it's absolutely ridiculous and that's a series on my channel that will probably never die because i feel like I'm... oh my god I feel like the way that I do my makeup is constantly ever evolving. Matter of fact, the way that I do my makeup now, even compared to my last How to Kick Your Face Like a Pro, which I actually don't even know when that was. I think that it was in Mykonos like a year ago, which is also really weird because my honeymoon is in Mykonos. Hopefully I'm only gonna have one wedding day, so uh, I felt like I should film some kind of How to Kick Your Face Like a Pro wedding edition. So hello. I don't know what this video is gonna be. I also feel like I'm in such a rush that um, I shouldn't explain every product. I should just like sit here and talk to you guys because in reality if you want to know the products that I use you can just go watch someone who's more educated on makeup if you're actually trying to learn about makeup here because let's be real I don't know shit um I start my makeup routine with my brows now though which I think is like super cool I don't think I used to do that look at my fucking eyebrows right now like they are so hard sisters not twins it's like disgusting like imagine if these were like my wedding eyebrows like <laughs> I'm in such a fucking rush it's absolutely ridiculous and filming this video is literally the dumbest possible thing I could do but like hi it's every day bro what to talk about <laughs> it's my wedding day I'm actually really 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 fucking nervous you talk about something and you prepare for it as much as you possibly can but you never really know how you're gonna feel when it's actually happening and it's really crazy i love that i have botox so my face stays so still when i'm doing something like that like raise your eyebrows oops i can't and i actually didn't sleep last night because i was packing hella because i found out last minute from my fiance who's last minute just like me because we're perfect for each other <laughs> uh, that we're gonna go straight from vegas to mykonos instead of um from la la to vegas back to la then to mykonos so i ended up having to stay up so fucking late packing and then by the time I was unpacking, I needed to shower. And showering, I feel like, for girls is so unenjoyable. They always show girls like in the movies and shit showering and they're just like sitting on the floor like having like a good time. Showering for me is literally like 30 minutes of intensive exfoliating and then like a fucking five step skincare routine and then like shaving every crevice of my body including like my asshole and like my arms and like my wrists and like I just like to be a smooth ass bitch, you know? And I also don't shower probably as frequently as most people so I really like to like make the most of it if I'm gonna get in there, you know? Which I totally think is a personality trait and it's absolutely not. And I don't know how I can convince someone to marry me today, what? So then I showered and self tanned for like three hours and then it was like 5.30 a.m. And then I also really wanted to make a sappy ass video for Jake because I'm ridiculous. And so I just spent the last hour making that video. Link below, shameless self promo. Go watch it and cringe at my love. Would it even be a Tana Mojo wedding day if I got a full night's sleep before? Or if I got any sleep before for that matter? And I just said Tana Mojo. Holy fuck. I'm so fucking excited to have a fucking last name that everyone can spell and pronounce let's be real here people said are you gonna do mojo dash paul like bitch no i've been trying to get rid of mojo since i have had it those are my eyebrows like from here like they're not that good but like from here 
I'm also so sick right now. I literally have like walking pneumonia. I've given it to every single person around Jake except Jake. So I'm just kind of waiting for him to get sick and fucking blame me. But he also thinks that being sick is a choice. So uh, me sitting here in my own head like, do I need winged eyeliner for the jet? No, maybe just like be on time so your fiance doesn't hate you on your fucking wedding day, you stupid bitch. Okay, so now I'm gonna put on some Marc Jacobs Remarkable. You know, I might be a new bitch. I might be a married bitch. Amari just woke up. He's literally been asleep for like three hours and I missed him so much. Like I don't even know how we live in different cities and I'm so over it. I'm so glad he's moving in. Oh, by the way, Amari's moving in. That's exciting. As I'm like moving out fucking into Jake's. Yeah, I might be like a different, I might be like a different bitch, you know, but I'm still using Marc Jacobs Remarkable on my wedding day. I really feel like there's a video or a live stream or something out there somewhere where I verbatim said like, I will wear Marc Jacobs Remarkable on my wedding day. And here we are. Mark Jacobs still doesn't sponsor me. I'm like, but this time I bought it on daddy's black card. Actually, speaking of daddy's black card, is that something that needs to be said? People actually literally verbatim to my face all the time ask me if I would love Jake or be with him if like he didn't have the money that he has. It's interesting because a lot of people probably really do think that considering the amount of jokes that I constantly make about the amount of money that Jake has, I would be with Jake if he literally worked at a fucking Target. I mean, maybe we wouldn't think the same because our lives wouldn't have been so different like butterfly effect and like bleh. I'm constantly more so making jokes about the things that he has because I feel like he's such a humble, generous person. Like I watch him every single day give everything he has to everyone around him. Jake really is the type of person that like anything you say you want to happen, like he will make it happen, you know? Natalie's yelling at Trevor to get up right now because he's saying he doesn't want to. But yeah, obviously in the beginning, I'm just joking around, you know? I think, especially seeing me go from like my ex to Jake Paul fucking Calabasas Tesla fucking Lamborghini Rolex looking ass, you know what I mean? It's a really funny punchline. But now it's more so that I guess I am just like proud of him and all he like works for. And like it's dope to brag for my fiance soon to be husband. Oh my God, he deserves it, you know? I love making those jokes, but I also hope the people that like really fuck with me or us know that like, I'm not just fucking with him for his money. I'm truly with him because like he understands me unlike anybody else. This get ready with me is so sappy. Now I'm throwing on some concealer to pretend like I slept last night. Trevor! Yeah. Are you up? Yeah. Well, go the fuck off. I have to meet you guys at the airport. Why? Mm. Just hurry. Like you have to leave now and your Uber literally should like should wait outside of your house. <laughs> You saying T to like probably missing a private jet flight that Jake paid for is me. Powder. Hella powder. Guys, Laura Mercier finally put me on the PR list to star. One step closer to Marc Jacobs, but also like probably not. Wow, I'm actually so nervous for today. I'm like sitting here making jokes. Like I'm not fucking getting married today. Also, where is... I took it off to shower. <sighs> Almost losing the Rolex that Jake bought me once a day has become my new favorite pastime. I can totally afford it if I lose it. <laughs> Ooh, this video is very like, fucking get ready with me, fucking chatting with me, fucking girls, hi. I have not had a chance in a YouTube video to really talk about the response to my show. The viewership is fucking insane. I'm gonna be honest with you. Me just opening all this new makeup, I kind of balled out at Sephora because I didn't want to bring ratchet ass makeup to like Mykonos and like turn everything white there like orange. <laughs> I'm gonna be so honest with you and tell you that I never ever thought the viewership on my show would be what it is. Like bottom line, like I absolutely, like first episode went live like first day and I was like, there's no way. And it's not even just like, um the views it's like the watch time and the shares and seeing how many people watch episode the newest episode and go back and watch the first two and or seeing how many people watch the first one and then go and watch all of them and seeing how many people are tuning into the episode the second that it drops like it's fucking crazy. And also on top of that, I wasn't gonna film my wedding. I just wanna put that out there. I am getting accused every second of only marrying Jake for the reality show, which obviously is a very valid claim. If you saw Tana Mojo and Jake Paul getting married and it happened to be perfectly timed with a reality show that she was also filming, I would accuse that of her too. I get it. I'm not even coming for people for thinking that because like, you know, when I started filming the show actually, I was originally not even going to have Jake on it at all. Like literally at all. Just because I didn't want people to think that like it, what we were doing 
doing was like for the show. It's I guess to touch on Jana being real and all of that kind of shit and whatever. I understand anybody asking if it's like fake because obviously it started off with us making a lot of jokes about doing everything for like clout, you know? And I've been saying this a lot in interviews, but I feel like the best way to put it is like, yes, we hype things up for camera. Obviously we rush things and do crazy things. Obviously, hi, it's my wedding day. But this all started with like us hooking up at his house off camera. And you could say that I rebounded from my ex to him, but to get really, really candid about my past relationship, I, in the last few months of dating uh, my ex, I, this video is getting so deep. I literally just like wanted to like cry a little high. Um, I've already cried today making an emotional video about Jake. Oh my God. I was literally like praying to God every single day for like a way out of that relationship. Somebody liked her several times and told her that she was beautiful and fly. She should not have purchased those shoes. She should have put them back on the rack. She's nothing of the sort. Bye. What is that from? Gemma, she is a fat cunt. <laughs> She is a fat cunt. Somebody lied to her several times and told her that she was fly, hot, and sexy, and beautiful. She's nothing of the sort. She should have put them back on the rack and she should never even purchase them. Dude, you, I can't believe you walked down here as I was literally talking about praying to God. <laughs> like, it's in that. Like, describe our friendship in one action. Any hoozy. I was like literally praying to God every single day for like a way out because I felt really trapped and ironically compared to this situation with Jake in that relationship, I felt like I rushed into things and I felt like I was with someone who didn't really understand me and I felt like I was yeah. with someone. Yeah? What are you wearing on the plane? No idea. Oh. Can't even think about it right now actually. You just walking down here in an $800 sweatsuit. Like, what are you gonna oh wear? God. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't realize you are vlogging. Hi. It's wedding day. It's wedding day. Um, but yeah. And it's like, I was so deep into that relationship publicly. And I felt like I was being really controlled and really turned into someone that I wasn't. And with someone who would never understand me or understand my ideals on anything like trust or polyamory even, or fucking, you know, was making me unfollow all my ex and say and act and dress and post a certain way and they really made me feel like that was like the way love was traditionally and that I was fucked up for not being like them. It put me into a place too of just like a lot of self-hatred but you know looking down on myself and the way that I am and not working hard because they didn't work hard and really missing the people who really did understand me. But it also really made me value what it is to have someone who understands you and someone who makes you your best self and makes you grow and that you don't have to carry, you know, someone who makes life feel equal. And in a weird way, when my ex cheated on me, obviously it was so fucking painful and not the way I wanted the relationship to end at all. But I felt like it was God giving me like the sign I begged for to walk away before things were too serious and for a long time, I felt like I was just like trapped because it was so public and because he would leave me and do exactly what he did, which was go do interviews and make me look like shit and deny it all and whatever. But I knew in my head like that I was good to him. I don't even know, whatever. My entire relationship, anytime I ever needed serious advice about business or what I was going through, the person I was going to completely as a friend was Jake. But in the back of my head, I missed Jake so much and Jake was among the list of a thousand people that my ex didn't want me to talk to or be around because he was threatened and by and I think that also makes you miss someone more when someone else is like controlling you to not talk to them you know what I mean it really makes you value how great someone is too because it's like fuck like Jake's absence in my life was very prevalent to me I guess if that makes sense and then for my ex and I to break up and kind of find out that Jake had been going through things so similarly to me was a very warm feeling and it was exactly what I needed and I mean I had been broken up with my ex for an hour and I texted Jake like I miss you and I've been wanting to say it for a really long time hi and so yes he was my rebound but it was also like a joke we were in on we both were like hi be my fucking rebound you know and I went to his house and like the way I felt that night I don't think I felt at all throughout my entire relationship at all we were in the hot tub just like sitting there talking to each other and I remember looking at him being like wow like you and I are picking up exactly where we left off like romantically I guess I don't really know what the word is two years ago and maybe we both were supposed to go through something really similar to bring us even closer together
together in a way, maybe. I don't know. And I intended to probably keep it off camera because I mean, I didn't know where it was gonna go. First of all, you know, we could have been a fucking one night stand or it could have been a fucking marriage. Hi, it's a marriage. That's what happened. I posted a Snapchat. His bed frame is in the back. You know the fucking story. And I woke up the next day to every news outlet on earth telling me their opinion on it in my verified tab on Twitter and every fucking fandom telling me if they ship Jake and his ex or me and Jake Moore or me and my ex or me and Jake Moore and a thousand YouTube drama channels and commentators telling us we're all faking it for clout when like holy fuck we were just hooking up last night in his bed and never wanted anyone to find out what. And I think we both were in a situation where it was like, now, no matter where we go together or do anything, there's gonna be fans taking photos and paparazzi and more Keemstar and more drama alert and more commentary and more whatever. And the best way I know how to put it is completely letting go and then just letting everybody scrutinize that and scrutinize you and pick you apart and spectate on you. Like you're a fucking zoo animal is the worst feeling in the world because it's like, it's just a reminder that in this life, even if you want to keep something private, sometimes you don't get to and the power gets taken away from you and it is a really, really, really fucking shitty feeling. And I think that Jake and I both realized that to put it simply, we both love what we do and we both have really crazy lives that when something crazy happens, we document it, we put it on the internet and that's also simultaneously our job. And we both think really, really fucking similarly. And it was kind of like a, Alexa, since it's your wedding in Vegas, is it appropriate to take a shot at 9 a.m.? <laughs> the dichotomy of this video, Omar, I'm literally sitting here talking about like love and the most serious <coughs> shit while I get ready. And then every five minutes someone walks down the stairs and just says like some reckless ass shit. And I'm like, hey. And it was kind of like, let everyone else talk about it and sit back and look like fucking idiots and give the power away to everyone else or be Tana Mojo and Jake Paul. Document it from our side and play into the joke and take the power back. And I think it was the best decision we ever made. In the amount of time that we started doing that, which who knows the way things would have gone if it remained a secret. Maybe we would have never realized this because we probably wouldn't have started spending every single waking moment together, you know? I think we both realized that we are identical and it's crazy in life to meet someone who thinks just like you and knows what you're gonna say before you say it and in every way that you are yin, they are yang, you know? And to see the ways that we do and will continue to make each other our best selves in love, in life, etc. I understand why people think it's all fake, you know, or they have a lot to say or whatever. But I don't know. I hope that explanation makes a little sense. I think that we both always kind of knew we were similar people and that we fucked with each other, but it caught us both off guard too see how well our energies and worlds could work when put together. Really fucking rare to find that. I mean, I, I literally said it in my video today. I thought I would fucking go the rest of my life and never find someone that understands me the way that Jake does. And obviously, to touch on the wedding stuff, like we're fucking crazy for getting married. That really sums it up. You know, we could fucking be married forever or for fucking 10 days and get back together or fucking break up and meet back up again in fucking 20 years because we'll realize that no one else will ever understand us in the same way or whatever it is. I mean, we are definitely really crazy for taking it day by day, but that's what we're doing. And uh, this sentence is gonna sound absolutely fucking lutely insane. Psychotic, like on some like snooky Jersey Shore, like use this as the fucking season two opener for my fucking reality show. Oh, that's what I was talking about. I'll get back to that. Um. But, but we're doing it and I'm really happy about it. So hey, and to everybody that's calling it fake because we rushed into it or because I don't do things traditionally because I wanted to not do it legally. But any wedding I have, if I had three more fucking weddings, I really wouldn't want to do it on paper because I think that legally binding yourself to someone takes away the love. Like it's just like, it's unnecessary to all of the people that think it is not real. And we're just putting on this show as two fucking sociopaths. It is real. That's all I know to tell those people. We are just fucking crazy. And that's what you can talk shit about, really. Back to the show thing. Hey, 
I remembered. Yeah, I was never ever gonna put anything Jake and I on the show and then one day when I was filming that wild and out scene in episode two, Jake walked in and they caught it on camera. That scene ended up being such a crazy good scene for a reality show, that's just the bottom line. Things ended up also getting a lot more serious than I thought they would, you know? Waterproof mascara in case I cry. And I kinda, I had an abrupt meeting with MTV where we all were kinda like, what are we doing? You dating Jake right now is taking up fucking 40% of your life and like, why aren't we filming it? And I was like, holy shit, you're right. And we only had a contract for I think eight episodes, a certain amount of episodes. And when the wedding was gonna be just like a day after the proposal, MTV was gonna film that obviously, cause that was just gonna be like a day in my life during when I was filming or whatever. Then we moved the wedding because we wanted to take it seriously. The date of the wedding being moved ended up being outside of the dates I was filming my show contractually. I know, big words, big sentences. It's kind of crazy. Tana Mojo, a businesswoman question mark? No, just a crackhead. We were just gonna get married, fucking vlog it like two fucking ace family wannabes and call it a fucking day. And then it was like every tweet, every comment, every everything was like, they're better be a wedding fucking special to end your fucking show. And then it was like deja vu, back at MTV, back at Viacom, VidCon's next fucking door, what the fuck is my fucking life? We're having a meeting again where it's like, holy fuck, you guys are vlogging it like, why don't we just film it? Like we would be dumb not to film it. That's just another form of like content of it to look back on. And like why end the show on a random fucking note when you could literally end it like marrying someone that you actually ended up falling in love with. And I guess to say something really sappy to that, I think a lot of people are gonna be like, how could you fall in love with Jake? Me saying this with one eyelash on, like holy fuck, like hi, hi. Marrying Jake Paul today, not marrying Jake Paul today. I don't think it really was that I fell in love with Jake in two months. I think it was that from the moment I met Jake two years ago, I always knew I would. <laughs> I always knew I might fall in love with him. And it was like the moment I started to feel that emotion. It was like everything I've been through up until this point. I mean, I don't really know how I expected to film a wedding day glam without getting really fucking cheesy. So like whatever, suck a dick. Yeah. I'm like, so my wedding special is linked below. No. <laughs> Anything else I want to talk about that's like serious? I guess VidCon, because I haven't really talked about that on my YouTube channel. A lot of people ask me why I didn't vlog VidCon. To be honest with you, it was because I wanted to experience it. I just got full body goosebumps. Holy fuck. Can I have one moment of this video where I'm just like talking about my lash glue smelling like pussy, like this fucking old Tiana? It's something I never thought I would get to do, and I still don't know how I did it, and it is still and will always be one of the most perfect weekends of my life. Holy fuck. I'm a new bitch. Uh, hi. Have my coffee, wow. have my shower. You literally are a new bitch. Good morning. You look good, guys. Look at Natalie. It's wedding day. Shout I'm like, out Tana the outfit. Oh my god. Shout out Saucy Collection, Tammy Hembro, hashtag ad. Guys, Natalie's a full blown influencer right now. I've fully decided this is Natalie. She is my executive queen assistant who is literally more of a fucking boss bitch than I will ever be. My whole life is actually together because of her. So I feel like I should take a lipstick and a lash glue. Yeah, facts. I'm right. like, just important oh, things. Yeah. But Natalie's like a full blown influencer. Didn't you just hit 10K? I just hit 10K. <laughs> Swipe. Um. <laughs> so I've actually known Natalie for a really long time because I how did I I was I was gonna say that I met you through Bella, but that's actually not true. She worked with Bella, but I, I almost met Bella through you. Yeah, I was just gonna say, but I set her up with Bella. We both met in Vegas as some Vegas hoes, but then she ended up working with Bella, so I would like see her like every day. And we're just the same bitch. We really are just the same bitch. Every single thing that comes out of Natalie's mouth is literally the most iconic thing ever. Like I write down things she says on a day to day basis. She's literally like me on fucking steroids. I don't even know how to explain it. You'll see. And I didn't know if it was like. Like if I was ready to like full blown blast Natalie on some fucking Natalina Noel, fucking Victoria Villarreal shit. Like we were just kind of taking our time. And then Natalie hooked up with Peyton at the Team 10 house and Jake started vlogging her because she's an icon and he like, you know, obviously she's being iconic, he's in a fucking vlogger. Um, and so Natalie started blowing up and I was like, okay, um, I was gonna wait until I was a daily vlogger to vlog the crazy shit you do on a daily basis, but you're blowing up as an influencer, so hi. So yeah, basically- started me. Oh my God. I really am doing this. I'm saving my first swipe up for like Tana merch or like whatever. <laughs> oh, because you don't get a swipe up feature till you have 10K. Yeah, and I haven't used it yet. <laughs> She's saving her swipe up virginity to me. Like that's iconic. Like literally what? Like who says that? Like who was like, oh, now I have swipe ups. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it to you. But yeah, basically Natalie's gonna be more famous than me and I'm gonna work for her and that's what's gonna happen. And now you guys have met her. So hey. Okay. 
I'm getting closer. Old Lily lashes are on. You'd think I would put new ones on on my fucking wedding day, but uh, I'm not gonna because I'm fucking frugal. Just kidding. I actually think that Lily lashes after a few wears are prettier than them when you first get them and they stay on better because the band kind of like shapes to your eye. So basically they just get better as you have them and they're totally worth the $30. And if $30 is too much, you can use Cotana to save money. Hashtag. Uh, Shane's on vacation right now and I'm so fucking sad he's not gonna be at my wedding. That is the only thing that's so weird. Jordan is uh, walking me down the aisle, which does feel really right. And since this video is sappy, we'll just go right into that tell. Um, Jordan really did fucking raise me. Like actually, like I absolutely feel like I never felt like I had any form of a father figure until um, Jordan came in my life and saved everything my parents fucked up about me. Holy shit. So him fucking walking me down the aisle today sounds about right. It's also going to be the most comedic thing on earth. Jordan is not gonna be able to keep a straight face. I know he's gonna laugh. Now I'm just dicking around with eyeshadow because I have 12 minutes. I can't do that yet because I just got lip filler. Only I would get lip filler, by the way, like days before my wedding, which I know is like a little ridiculous, but like also like my lips were looking a little small, you know? I kept getting photos of me from like photographers and face tuning them. And the only thing I was like heavily face tuning was everything. But other than everything, <laughs> I was like resizing my lips till I uh, face tuned them in real life. Oh, does this mean 50% of Jake Paul's absence is mine now? So like when I promote his videos, like I'm just like promoting my own. Logan finally believes that Jana is real also, which is something that I never thought I would see. I still don't think he's in full support because we rushed into things, but he did cry the other day. And I really never thought I would be at a place in my life where Logan Paul was crying to me, so. But I'm marrying his brother as well. Does this makeup look like daddy's jet? Honestly, no, it fucking doesn't. It looks like shit. Jesus, fuck. So basically my makeup today is just the same as it fucking always is. Oh my god, no. I also have been doing so many cool makeup tricks that like I would have done in today's video. I'm just in a rush, but I also feel like not filming my wedding makeup would have been so fucking dumb. Not that this is even my wedding makeup. I also feel like not getting wedding makeup views would have been so dumb. And I just felt like there was a lot of little random things I wanted to talk about. Yeah, this whole conversation started by me talking about the response to um, my show. And I was just gonna say before I got sidetracked, thank you. I never ever in a million years thought that that many people would care to watch me live my day-to-day -day life. And we've been having really crazy conversations now about the future of the show which is also really crazy and interesting and scary and i don't even know i i guess i just always want everyone me erasing an overline because my lips are filled with juvederm right now i never ever want anyone to ever even remotely think that my priority is not number one at youtube and every single thing that i'm doing comes from you so uh thank you just down to i wouldn't i probably would have never met this person that i now could not even imagine living without if it wasn't for me making youtube videos i just got full body chills i always talk about jake and i understanding each other a lot and i always really talk about it in the way of him understanding me because of our lives being so similar just so many of the shitty things I've been through, he's been through as well. And I feel like it caused us to both think the same way in the ways that we do. It's not even just YouTube. It really is everything, like down to like our childhoods and like the way we process our emotions and trauma and like crazy fucking shit, which I feel like again in life, you never really think you're gonna meet someone who like, you know, whose trauma matches your couple goals, but like really, it's fucking nutty. And I probably would have never felt that. I probably never would have met Jake or felt that if it wasn't for YouTube, so. Hey, thanks for watching my videos. Uh, if I need to dump out this makeup case somewhere, where should I do it? Like in a drawer? Uh, yeah. Okay, guys. How to cake your face like a hoe wedding edition. I love you guys so fucking very much. It is absolutely insane. Thank you for watching my videos and caring about my life, including my fucking wedding day glam. That's also not my wedding day glam, but also is my wedding day glam, but like also is not my wedding day glam. By the time you see this, I will be Tana Marie Paul. <laughs> and that is the weirdest fucking turn of events that ever could have possibly happen hopefully by the end of this video you got that i am very happy in the moment that i'm currently in and maybe because i'm so so you fucked up in the head i can't begin to express to you that that's what this is all about for me is that i'm happy in this moment and no matter where life fucking takes me slash us at my husband i'm happy it's a crazy fucking roller coaster and i'm never gonna stop documenting all of it i'm so fucking grateful that you are here every step of the way um, because there wouldn't be steps and there wouldn't be a way if it wasn't 
for fucking you. Now, um, I am 10 minutes behind for a jet. I've got to hop on and, uh, I mean, being late to my wedding would be very me, but I think a plane full of 30 influencers waiting on me, uh, and me being late and holding it up, uh, sounds like TanaCon vibe B. So, um, I'm gonna rush and go. It's my wedding day. I'm gonna fuck off. I love you so very much, and I will talk to you guys in the next video.